What's up folks? Welcome to Woodworking Against the Grain. Look here, it's coconut cake day. We're going to make an old-fashioned coconut, uh, old-fashioned three-layer coconut cake today, so stay with us. First thing we're going to do is get this cake pan ready to accept cake batter. Now we've talked about this a little bit before, but I'm going to show you how to do it today. I've got two others already done over there. I want to show you just on one of these how to do your best to see that your cake doesn't stick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some coconut oil all over the bottom and inside of this cake pan right here. I like coconut oil because at room temperature it's solid. But it's got a low melting point. It melts at about 85 or 90 degrees. It gets liquid for you pretty easy. But when it's just room temperature, it's just kind of solid about the consistency of shortening. And I like that. I don't like shortening, and I don't recommend you use shortening. But I like the consistency of, of uh, the shortening, how it melts easy and it's solid enough to work with. Cake batter is always seeking a place to stick. Remember that. If you give your cake half a chance, it'll stick in the pan. You can't get it out, and you'll be mad about it, and it'll ruin your whole day. So you have to do everything you can to ensure your cake doesn't stick. So I've got this coconut oil painted all over the bottom of this pan. Now I'm going to sprinkle some granulated sugar in there. Just, I don't know probably less than a fourth of a cup. Now we're going to slide that sugar around. I hope you can see that pretty good. And let it stick to that coconut oil. Hopefully that's going to give us a barrier between the bottom of that pan and our cake batter because I cannot stand for a cake to stick. You want to get enough sugar in this to coat the bottom of it and kind of up on the, the edge of the sides, up about a half inch. You don't want this cake to stick if you can help it. So go ahead and grease it good and get your uh, sugar or flour. You can use sugar or flour for this. It doesn't really matter. Uh, a lot of people use flour. I've used flour before. I happen to be using sugar today. So do all you can to see that your cake doesn't stick. All right, what we're going to do now, I've got a half or I've got a cup of butter in the mixer here. We're going to turn this on, let that butter kind of get creamed up just a little bit there. To this butter, we're going to add two cups granulated sugar. Two good cups of granulated sugar to this butter. And we're just going to let that mix a while. Let this make an emulsion. We call it creaming sugar and butter around here, but it's actually making an emulsion. You can let this mix for as long as you need to. As long as it's just butter and sugar, it won't hurt anything. Let it go. Let it mix good. Get kind of fluffy. While we come over here and get our flour, our dry ingredients, ready to go, I've got three cups of all-purpose flour in this sifter right here. Run it through the sifter good, get all the lumps out of it. You know the drill here. We're going to sift it back again. Put about half of that in there. To that I'm going to add three and three-fourths teaspoons of baking powder and three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. We're going to sift that through here. This recipe actually calls for self-rising flour, but I don't like self-rising flour. Self-rising flour already has baking powder and salt in it, and I like to control how much baking powder and salt I put in there, so I converted this recipe to uh, all-purpose flour. And for all-purpose flour, for every cup of it you use, you have to use a teaspoon and a fourth of baking powder and a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. So just do the math on that and uh, convert that over if you're going to use all-purpose flour instead of self-rising. 
I'm a fan of old-fashioned cooking. You know that by now if you've seen very many of these videos. I like old-fashioned ways sometimes. If you're not that way, that's fine. You don't have to be. I happen to be. This is an old-fashioned coconut cake recipe that I like to use. Uh, one that my mother used to make all the time when I was growing up. And so it's got a little bit, I guess, of nostalgic, sentimental value to me. Uh, but it's just an off-the-chain cake. This is a basic yellow cake recipe right here. What's going to set this cake apart is the type of icing that we're going to put on it. We're going to make a seven-minute icing, or some people call it a white mountain icing that we're going to actually cook and put on this cake, and then we're going to dust it with grated coconut when we get done, and it's awesome to eat. Now our butter's creaming here good. It's sweetened already. I'm going to stop the mixer. I'm going to scrape down the beater. Scrape down the sides of the bowl a little bit. This is an easy cake to make as far as the cake goes. It's a basic yellow cake recipe with a cup of butter, two cups of sugar, three cups of flour, and four eggs, three and three-fourths teaspoons of baking powder, three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt, and about a teaspoon of vanilla. Right now I'm going to turn this back on. I'm also going to put a cup of coconut milk in it. Now this butter, I wish you could see this, got a lot of air in it now. It's very pale yellow, fluffy, mixed real good with the sugar. We're going to start adding four whole eggs, one at a time. Let each egg mix in there real good. Let that yolk get kind of busted up. Get mixed into the batter really well. I'll tell you why I like old-fashioned cooking. I think it's becoming a lost art, and that worries me. I don't want there to ever come a time when there's nobody that knows how to make an old-fashioned coconut cake. That'd be a sad day. People are busy nowadays. They don't have as much time to cook as they used to. I realize that. Cooking's not everybody's passion. It's only one of mine. I like to do a lot of things. I like to work in the wood shop, various other activities. But when I do cook, I like to cook homemade. I like to cook things sometimes the old, old folks way, I like to call it. And I'm trying to turn people on to that. Spend time in the kitchen. Challenge yourself. Make something you've never made before just to see if you can. Get in there and make a mess. Make something delicious for people you love. It's a wonderful thing. Now once we get these eggs in here, we've got to start monitoring our time just a little bit. We want to get it mixed up good. I'm going to give this bowl another scrape down. This is one of those cakes where you don't want to be in too big a hurry. Make it when you've got plenty of time so you can make it right. People that eat it will remember you for it and then, boy, that was a good coconut cake he made or a good coconut cake she made. They took a lot of pains with that. Go about it that way. Now, we've got this butter, sugar, and egg thing going on here. Now, we're going to turn the mixer down real slow. We're going to start adding, spooning this flour into this batter. Just by the heaping tablespoonful. This is a thick batter. You're going to hear the mixer start to bog down the more flour I put in here. Now once you get a little bit of that flour in there, start drizzling this coconut milk in there. This is going to give this a real deep, rich coconut flavor. It's off the chain. Go back with some more flour. Very simple recipe to make. I have been a long, long time since I've made this kind of icing that we're going to make in a few minutes. 
I hope it turns out really well because if it don't, chances are you won't ever know about this video. I come from a family that likes to cook and likes to eat. Both of those things show on our waistline too. Flour and milk, alternating. The recipe says start and end with flour. I don't know what difference that makes. I bet you if you start and end with the milk, the cake's still good. Some recipes need challenging, some of them don't. I dumped the last of the flour in. I'm going to do this wrong. I'm going to finish up with the milk. Now once you get your flour in there, you don't want to overbeat that. Don't want to make the cake tough. Now right here I've got about a teaspoon of vanilla flavor. Pure, pure vanilla, not imitation. You can taste the difference, believe me. Once that's all in there, I'm going to spin this real fast for just a few seconds. Not very long at all. Then I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to give it one more good scrape down. Then I'm going to show you how to get this in the cake pans. We're going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Give that just a spin. Don't, don't overwork your flour. As soon as it's mixed up good, turn it off. See how thick that batter is on that beater? That's how thick this batter is supposed to be. It's not a real thin batter. It's just almost, you could almost call it dough, just a little bit wetter than bread dough. Not much at all. We're going to take our beater off of here. Knock the rest of that off of there. Taste of that cake batter and see if it's good. If you don't like raw cake batter, don't eat it. But don't make fun of me for doing it. Now, we're going to put this in three well-prepared non-stick cake pans. And we're going to hope that they don't stick. Be careful when you're going to divide this batter. Start by just kind of covering the bottom. You want to try to get this kind of equal in all three of these pans so all three of your layers are about the same thickness. So it's kind of best to kind of spoon some into each pan and then look and see which one you think needs some more. Which one needs a little bit less or whatever. And you don't have to get it exact. Get you a good spatula and scrape it out of there. You want to kind of spread that out with your spatula just a little bit. I'll show you why in just a minute. Since this batter is as thick as it is, we've got to do a little trick here to uh, ensure our success. And it's a little bit annoying, but it's a necessary evil for this cake. Get you a dish towel. Fold it up. This will stop some of the noise. We're going to take these cake pans from about four or five inches up. We're going to just drop them a few times until that batter spreads out in that pan and all air bubbles come to the top. That one's okay. We have to do this to all three. I dropped my spoon. All three layers of this cake. I know this is a little bit annoying, but if you'll do this, You'll get better results. Your cake is less likely to fall, and your layers will come out of the pan fairly level.
Just drop it enough to get all the cake batter out to the side and it'll push all the air up to the top of your layers. I realize that's a little bit annoying, but I want you to see that because if you want a good cake, it's the, the devil's in the details. We're going to put these in the oven, 350 degrees. Take them out, let them cool for about five minutes in the pan, turn them out on some racks, and we'll start on this white. All right, we got lucky. All three of our layers came out of the pan good. We got them on some cooling racks here. We're going to let those cool down to room temperature while we make this icing, and we're going to smear it all over here and have us some good old-fashioned coconut right, cake. Here. We're about ready to make our icing. Put on this coconut cake. It's going to take a little while. I don't know exactly how much of this I'm going to be able to show, but I'm going to try to explain it a little bit before I get started in case I don't use all this footage. You'll know a little bit about what's going on here. We're going to cook this icing, this uh, seven-minute icing or uh, whatever you want to call it. Basically, what we're doing here is making marshmallow cream. So what I'm going to do is put... I'm going to take this candy thermometer out for a minute. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But we've got a cup of sugar and a half a cup of corn syrup going in this pot. So basically that's just two different kinds of sugar. Get all that out of our measuring cup there. Don't want to waste none of that. Get that going there. Sugar, corn syrup in the pot. Also, <clears throat> four tablespoons of water. Sugar, corn syrup, four tablespoons of water, and we're going to build a fire under it. A pretty good fire. We want that on medium-high heat. Because we're going to cook this to 240 degrees or what's known as soft ball stage if you're a candy cooker. Get this sugar dissolved in here. We're going to bring this, put this candy thermometer back on this pot. We're going to let that cook till it gets up to 240 degrees. That should be a good rolling boil. What we're going to do, once that gets pretty hot, we're going to put these four egg whites in this mixer bowl along with a little bit of cream of tartar, about a fourth of a teaspoon, and a little bit of pure vanilla flavoring. And we're going to whip these egg whites we're going to get them up to, to a stiff peak. Once this gets to our temperature, we're going to drizzle real slow, just a thin thread. Drizzle this mixture into these egg whites while they're still mixing in the mixture. And that's going to make a good fluffy marshmallow cream that we're going to put on this coconut cake. Once we get it on the, between the layers and on top and all around the sides, we will dust that whole cake with sweetened coconut flakes, and it will be good to eat. Stay with us. You don't want to miss this. Be very careful when you're cooking sugar. It's hot. If it gets on you and burns you, you're going to be burned in a bad way. Be careful when you're stirring it. Don't slosh it on yourself. Don't spill it on yourself. Watch what you're doing. Safety in the kitchen is as important as safety in the wood shop. You don't run your table saw without being careful. Don't run your stove without being careful. Do you hear me? Now, it won't take this too awful long to get hot. Sugar cooks up pretty quick. I'm already at about 120 degrees. I know you can't see the uh, mercury rising in this thermometer, but I can. Tell you a little trick about whipping egg whites. You want to put this little attachment right here on your mixer. 
You don't use the same beater that we used on the cake batter. This is a whisk, and it does a better job of whipping up egg whites. I strongly recommend a tabletop mixer if you're going to do very much cooking. It doesn't have to be one just like this. Several different companies make them, but get you a good one. I love this one. It's got several attachments that go with it. It's got a pasta making attachment, a meat grinding attachment on the front. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. And it has been used lots of times. It's made a lot of good sweet stuff. Now this temperature is coming up pretty quick here. We're already up to about 180. So I'm going to go ahead and put these egg whites in this bowl. They're room temperature. Egg whites beat better at room temperature. And this is a fourth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Put that in there. I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear me because I'm going to turn this mixer on pretty fast and the whisk beating on the side of the bowl makes a little bit of noise. So we're going to turn this up. All the way up, we're going to whoop us some egg whites up while we're stirring this syrup here. We've already got a good boil going here. And we're at about 200 degrees. We're going to be just about ready when those egg whites get stiff, start pouring this in. All we like, as far as ingredients go, a little bit of vanilla that we'll put in there at the last. Get our bowls out of the way. Let them egg whites whip. Stir this sugar real careful like. The trick to this icing is in the drizzle. It's all in the drizzle. Got to pour it in really, really slow while them egg whites are beating. Makes a real white, glossy marshmallow cream. We're at about 200 degrees. Got a good boil going there. Egg whites are starting to get foamy. Takes a little time. Get your egg whites whipped up there. We're not quite up to temperature yet. This also cooks down a little bit as it boils. Some of the steam here is, you know, you've got a little bit of an evaporation going. So it's going to be somewhat concentrated. It's very sweet. And it's all that's going to be, uh, all the sugar that's going <clears throat> in the egg whites will be coming from this syrup that we're making here. These are starting to get pretty stiff. You don't want to overbeat those either. Even if you're not quite ready here, We can turn our mixer off, see if our peaks are about where we want them to be. Best way to tell, take a little bit of a rubber spatula, see if it'll hold a peak, and it almost does. I'm going to let that go just a few more seconds, not very long, and mess up every dish in the house it looks like. We're a little better than 200 degrees on our syrup over here. Got to get that just a little bit hotter. And I'm going to call that good right now on the egg whites. Try to knock these off the whisk there. That's a pretty, pretty good stiff peak right there. Get our whisk back on there so when we get ready to drizzle this in, we'll already be ready. This is starting to get thick and bubbly. We're at about 210 degrees. This would actually get hot quicker if I had a lid on it, but I can't see my thermometer with a lid, so let's do it like this. It's not going to take it just a few more minutes, and it'll be hot anyway. We're at about about 210 looks like on our thermometer here. I have a lot of videos or a lot of video ideas in my head for the next several weeks. We're kind of coming into fall here and it's getting kind of cooking weather. Uh, we're going to make some, not only are we going to make sweets this fall, we, we are going to make some more sweets, but we're also going to make some uh, shrimp and crawfish etouffee. We're going to make some gumbo. We're going to make a pecan cake, we're going to make a carrot cake, probably going to make some coconut pies, 
We're going to make some cinnamon rolls. We're going to make some biscuits. So we've got several things that we, you know, we've got lined up. We're also going to be doing some things in the shop. Got some more rolling pins to make, uh, things like that. Maybe some more ink pens. We've just finished a, a window seat in the house here that filled up a, a <clears throat> bay window area over there. I'll show that to you sometime when we get the finishing touches done to it. We're at about 220 on our syrup here. Almost where we want to be to start this drizzle. It's going to take a little while to drizzle this in too. Be ready when you get, when you pick this pot up to start your pouring, get a hold of it with both hands because you're going to have to hold it for a while. This, you don't want to pour this in there too fast uh, or it'll just, it'll flatten your egg whites out. It's got to be a real thin, real thin drizzle. We're at about 230. We don't like much. We're going to be ready to start this. You can see how this, as this syrup cools right here, starting to form a thread on that uh, wooden spoon. That's what you're looking for. If you don't have a candy thermometer, first off, I'd recommend you get one if you're going to do very much syrup cooking because it's just a whole lot better way to gauge uh, where your syrup is on the scale. As you get beyond 240 degrees, it starts changing very quickly from hard ball or from soft ball to hard ball to soft crack to hard crack. There's several different uh, ranges of temperature there, and it's hard to tell exactly what stage you're at if you don't have a thermometer that gives you the, the, uh, the temperature. You can take a spoonful of this and drop it in cold water and, and by what, how it reacts with the cold water, a good cook can tell what uh, stage it's, it's in, but I prefer this thermometer. You can get one uh, just about anywhere for 10 bucks probably and uh, you don't have to guess about it from that point on. Now, we have got our temperature here. So I'm going to turn this fire off. I'm going to turn this mixer back on about medium. And we're going to begin to slowly, slowly pour in this syrup and see if we can make us some coconut cake icing good enough to ride home about. Pour it in there real slow. I'm probably not. Alright, now we got our cake iced here. It looks like it turned out pretty good and what we're going to do now is we're going to sprinkle the top of it with some sweetened coconut flakes. This is the most fun part of making this whole cake. And this, I'm going to tell you right now, making this cake makes a mess. So if you ain't willing to make a mess and clean it up, you might all leave this cake recipe alone. Because it does make a mess. Now you see around the sides where it's kind of hard to get that sprinkle, what we're going to do here is we're just going to kind of pat that on there with our hands. We're going to get all into it. Just kind of twist your cake pan around. This is not a clean cake. Make this cake, you got to be willing to make a mess. And you got to be around here. You'd have to be willing to clean it up too. Ain't nobody going to clean it up for you, probably. We're going to go all the way around this with our coconut sprinkles. And then we're going to clean up around the edges there. Then we're going to cut us a piece of this. See if it's as good as it looks. Now this cake recipe was requested by a man that I know. And I want to give a shout out to Dylan Massey. Dylan, I'm going to bring you a piece of this. So be ready. That's probably enough coconut on there. 
for right now. It's going to fall off for a while. You kind of have to pick it up and put it back on there. So let's see. A little bit of a spot right here. Just kind of pat that in where it don't fall off too bad. And all this stuff, you know, it's just sugar and grease. It'll wash off of you. Don't, don't panic about it. My hands are good and clean. That is one neat looking coconut cake. What do you say we cut a piece of it? See if it's good. Our old fashioned coconut cake turned out pretty good. I hope you can see that. What I'm going to do is get you some of that on a plate. Get you a good fork. Get a bite of it that's got some icing on it like that. See? Check it out. It's best. with a cup of hot coffee. Thanks for watching. Come back to see it.